All right, I guess it's time for part two of this little little video series here of how or should I become a truck driver? So, given that I have the memory of a goldfish, I'm probably going to end up covering over or going over certain things that I put over in the last video because you know I just that happens. Uh, I think we were last talking about uh, like the driver or what you might be more naturally gifted at or some guys are more naturally gifted at certain things. Um, so what, what you're gonna end up finding is, like I said, you, you want to pursue, you wanna research and kind of have an idea, I guess in what aspect of trucking sounds the coolest to you from the start, right? Again, there are, there are companies that will hire a rookie in almost every field. Um, you know, if, if you really want to pull windmill turbines down the road, you're not going to do that out of the gate because, you know, a, a double schnabel set up with, you know, the truck, the Jeep, then a, 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 basically a claw mounted to the Jeep that hooks to the windmill tower that functions as the center part of the trailer hooked to another claw that's hooked to a usually a six or five or six axle steerable dolly uh, is, you know, 200 some odd feet from bumper to bumper and not really something for rookies. Um, however, the, uh, you know, that's, that's something that's kind of really, really exceptional anyways. Um, but when it comes to the general freight, like I said, you're going to look at either dry freight, ready for work, or again, flatbed. I, I think those are probably the three that are, you will find companies that will take new guys. Like I said, there are a couple of companies, tanker companies that will hire newbies. Um, he said Prime's food grade division, as far as I can tell, will, right? He said I've, I've met guys who are with a mentor, still there. Like, you know, there's a, a place I deliver in Pennsylvania that Prime actually has a yard. Their tanker training yard is literally, I don't know, two miles from where I deliver. Um, so obviously they get a lot of their loads coming to and from that place because it's right up the road pretty much. Um, so you've, you've got some options, right? The biggest thing that I, I would tell new guys is don't don't undersell yourself and don't settle for whatever the first guy gives you because again, you uh, you're worth more to the trucking company that is looking to hire you than they are to you, right? There are hundreds at this point in the United States. There are hundreds of companies hiring drivers right and at least several dozen of them will be within your like you know general area whether it's your home state whether it's your you know whatever you want to call it your your kind of your side of the country there are a plenty of, of, of different job options to start with and if you've gotten your CDL privately I think that qualifies as three years of experience depends on which like where you go. Some insurance providers say it's a year, others are up to three years. Three is the max that I've seen. I wouldn't be surprised, there might be more. Um, but three years was, was the most that anybody's ever said their insurance was worth for them. Or their uh, their their CDL school was worth to them, as far as insurance or experience. Um, but if you come in there with three years experience, like it really won't matter which, which job you choose, right? Again, heavy haul is probably, or that oversized like windmills are probably still out of the deal but, you know you can get into a flatbed place that also does heavy haul if you wanted to get into heavy haul you can get into you know several different avenues but uh you know that there are there are plenty of options for you um what else do you need to worry about here i'm trying to think what i covered in the last video i re-recorded this and discovered that i uh, i couldn't hold a, uh, a video that big on uh, on this dear old cell phone so i'd upload the other video to youtube and then delete all of the, the, the attempts to you know while everything was still fresh and uh re-record so i uh i'm trying to go by memory here as as to what i what i covered in the last video and what i still need to touch on um one of the things that i see a lot of drivers talk about is the struggles out here and how tough it's going to be and, you know oh man your first year is going to suck and my first year was fucking awesome, right? I got, I got on with a flatbed carrier. That was frustrating, but I learned a shitload. And then when I get into the lease purchasing, specifically to drive cool trucks to the West Coast, 
I had a fucking blast. Right? I do a, a straight or a, a furniture load out to the west coast, maybe three, four drops. Do a reset, and get a straight load of produce going right back to a uh, a warehouse, like uh, maybe 45 minutes from my house. Right? It was it was just about as perfect as you can get. Um, so obviously that most people aren't going to get there. Um, you know, you're you're going to have carriers that attempt to tell you that you're not worth that much. Right, well, we only give those those lanes to the experienced drivers, or, you know. The old, what they say you'll make versus what you actually make as a starting driver to make. Um, you know, again, generally speaking, a lot of those problems can be solved by asking questions. And again, ask, and don't feel, like, embarrassed to ask about money. That used to be a problem I had for the longest time, is I'd be afraid to ask, well, how much do I get paid? Because in my head, well, how much money are you going to give me? seems ignorant or rude, but guess what? It's kind of like why we all go to work, so that's kind of important. Um, don't uh, don't buy into lease purchase deals, right? Um, I'll do a whole video on lease purchase deals and my experience with them, but, you know, as, as it stands, I would, I would strongly recommend nobody does a lease purchase. Um, they're typically terrible ideas, and you know, there's, there's, again, I'll, I'll get into it, I'll do a video on it, yeah, there is a way to do it where, you know, you might be able to be okay with it, but I generally think that your, your, your best bet is to stay away from it, all right, if you want to become an owner-operator, you know, do it the same way, you'd be getting your CDL license, and go get a bank loan, buy the truck yourself, and and then you're calling the shots as far as where it goes to work and, you know, the company can't take it away from you. Um, you'll be away from home a lot, right? That's probably the one real sacrifice that you actually have to make nowadays is your time away from home, right? Um, you know, we live, it's, it's 2019 at this point. There are a myriad number of ways to communicate with your friends and family via social media, like, you know, Facebook, phone calls, like, I got Bluetooth in this truck, I can make phone calls all day long, like, you won't physically see your friends and family, which is the one thing that just, it is, in OTR, there is just no way around that, um, but we live in an age at this point where you're not, you know, it's not like the 80s where when, you know, when you go trucking, you're, you're, your spouse and your kids aren't going to hear from you at all until you find a payphone somewhere and, you know, check in four days later. Like, you know, everybody knows where, like, you know, your company knows where you are at all times. I mean, they track my Elon. They know where I am, right? I can check in with my friends and family every night, every day. So it's, it's not difficult to stay in touch with people anymore. Um, you just will miss being physically present at certain events, right? It, it'll happen. There's just... There's no real way around it because you're going to, you know, be in a situation where, oh shit, I was supposed to be home for this. Too late now, right? Like I've had instances where, you know, where I've been invited to a party and said, yeah, sorry, I won't be able to go. Like I'm already, I'm, I'm on the road, right? I'm not, I won't be able to get home, physically not able to get home, in, you know, between now and whenever this event is. Um, that's the big one, right? The guys have said, oh, you'll be smelly and stuff. No, you can have a shower every day, every other day, right? And that's that's not difficult. Um, you'll be sometimes hard-pressed. You might have to go a day or two without a shower. It depends on what happens. Um, realistically, doing what I do, I know that there is no day goes by where I don't have time available to take a shower, right? If, if I, you know stop for my lunch break and take a shower, right? I usually, when I stop and get fuel, turn that fuel stop into a 45 minute lunch, take a shower, grab a bite to eat and go. Um, if you're the kind of guy that wants to sit down in a restaurant and eat, then yeah, you might run into a bit more of a time crunch because again, any restaurants, 45 minutes to an hour just to, just to you know, be seated, get take your order, get your food out there and get out of there. Um, but if you're, you know, if, 
if you're more bringing food yourself, like I've got a fridge in this truck, so I bring, you know, I've got all the ingredients and stuff to make sandwiches and stuff in here. If you're if you're able to do that a little bit more, you know, a couple of days a week, then that 30 minute mandatory break, you might as well take it having a shower and get clean, right? So it's not it's not difficult to, to stay clean and all that stuff on the road. Um, entertainment. A lot of a lot of older truck drivers will make fun of guys like me for it. I got a, I got a computer and an Xbox or PlayStation. I got fuck all three. I got a computer, I got a PS4, and I got an Xbox 360 in my truck. Right? When I got to do a reset, if there's nothing else to do, like if there's nothing to see or the weather sucks or whatever, I can all sit in my bunk and save America or I'll save the galaxy or you know I'll fucking save the trucking industry on my computer game. Like there's tons of ways to entertain yourself. Um, again, if you're not a guy that's into video games or anything like that, you might be you might be hard pressed. But, or if you are one of those guys that runs with a mentor, and really your free time isn't really like personal time. I guess it can be hard to justify playing video games and stuff in the bunk with the trucks flopping around everywhere. Oh fuck, I couldn't do it. I don't know how guys even even run team like when you're with another experienced driver. I just I couldn't do it. Um, but there are, like I said, you're 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 going to be making a, a, a few lifestyle changes, but it's it's not as crazy as a lot of the guys make it out to be, right? A lot of these guys on YouTube talk about how like you know trucking is hard as hell, and you know only the strong survive, and yada yada. And I mean, there is a degree of I, I'd say mental and emotional strength you need for the job, but it's really no more than any other kind of unique job. Right? I mean, it, it, I think a lot of truck drivers tend to start, like the YouTube guys, almost compared to the military, like, oh man, you gotta be as tough as you can be to get in through it. It's like, this ain't the military, man. You drive a truck. I, li I, I live in a rolling apartment. Like, there's, the only thing this thing doesn't have is a bathroom. So it's not a, I'm not a, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not roughing it anymore. This isn't like, again, the 70s where your bunk was a wall that folds out over a board you put in between the seats and you slept on the seats like you know that you have if you're in a, in a if you're doing otr and you have a truck with a sleeper guaranteed that sleeper is at least got room for a bed and storage right i've got i've got a 63 inch high-rise sleeper on this peak and i've got probably two feet in front of the bed to the uh whatever you want to call it my uh my unicab like the I don't even know the fucking terminology for it. The, uh, whatever you want to call it, the connection between my bunk and my cab. There is a name for it. I'm just apparently stupid and can't remember it. Um, and then another, you know, couple inches to the seats. Like, I've got plenty of room back there. Shelving and, and storage cabinets and all that stuff. So that I've got, you know, my clothes are in cabinets. My, my you know, dry food, like bread and stuff like that, or in another, everything else in the fridge. All my video games and stuff fit in there. All my paperwork and all that stuff work. Like, you know, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? If you're the kind of guy that can, can plan a little bit, right? It, it, like, if, if you absolutely need mom to organize your bedroom for you, you're gonna have a problem, right? But if you can do a little bit of, of self organization, then you'll be fine. Same thing with doing stuff like laundry. I personally pack enough clothes to last for like three weeks. Um, you know, some guys don't do that. I think most people don't do that. I have the room and I don't really like paying five bucks to do laundry. So I just, I have enough clothes and I bring enough clothes where I can wear clean clothes for like three weeks straight. I'm never out for three weeks. Like I usually at most two weeks where I work now, this will be the longest I've been away from home, which will be a week and probably a week and five days or something like that, if that. So really it's, it's not a, not a huge commitment there either. Probably one of the biggest things that beyond, say, being away from home, you are going to have to focus on is becoming better as a truck driver, right? And I, this this is probably I, where I touched on in the last video. You know, you're you're there are lots of guys out here, and I think the collective term now is steering wheel holder, and that is a guy that just goes through the motions, does the bare minimum that the job asks to get your paycheck. And like I said, that's kind of a that's where you see a lot of accidents, where you see guys hitting people in trucks or in parking lots. You know, where you see the videos on YouTube of, of just dumb stuff happening on the highway. 
right? And, it, and a lot of those guys are really, really ignorant to what is uh, like, like what they might have done. Um, as an example, I I stopped at a I can't remember if it's a pilot or a flying J, and again, they're owned by the same company now, so really, they're I guess they're, they don't really matter. Um, I stayed at a flying J in Rollins, Wyoming. And uh, while I was there, a, a guy backed into a spot next to another driver, and I, I was parked across the way, so I witnessed it, but thankfully wasn't involved. And the guy back in hit the truck next to him. And I laughed because he had gotten his trailer into the spot, and all he had to do was, was like straighten his truck out so that it was line, in line with his trailer. And he overcompensated, and the front of his truck went from left to right, and when it went right, it hit the front of the guy to his right. Now, the guy who got hit, to his credit, he was pretty calm, he was pretty collected, but the guy that did the hitting was pissed off that we were, you know, that A, that there were people who witnessed it coming over to do, to see the damage and make sure everything was good, B, that the guy was calling the cops. And the guy, you know, well, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, man, like, you know, there's there's only a couple of dents, like, you don't need to call the cops, man, like, your, your company will fix it. He said, I own this truck. Well, you know, it's, it's not a big deal, man. It's, it's not a big deal. Like, I don't know why you're getting all upset and calling the cops. The guy said, I'm calling the cops because you hit me. And the guy, you know, the, the guy was, was, was talking to me about it. And he said, I don't know why that guy's calling the cops, man. Like, you know, I, I, I got a spread axle flatbed. I can't 90 it. I said, man, your trailer was already straight. Like, you're already past the point where there's any 90 degree pivoting on that trailer happening. He said, you hit him. Like, you know, it, it, it's it's not a big deal. It's you didn't fucking destroy his truck, but you hit him, right? It, you got it. The guy didn't want to give him his information and stuff. And again, the response was, "Well, you're, you know, my company just pays for my truck to get fixed. So what does it matter?" Like, and he couldn't comprehend the fact that no, when you own your own truck, you are on the hook for paying for it if you cannot get the person who hit you to pay for it, right? If that guy hit him and drove it away. That guy that got hit, would, he'd be the one paying for the damages because there's nobody to go after unless you had a dash cam that recorded the truck and the information on it or the guy sticks around. So, you know, the cops showed up and the guy had to give this information to the cops. And I, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, that was, you know, that was probably where it ended. The guy got his fender repainted and touched up and that was it. But the cops asked, like I told the guy that got hit, if you need a witness, you know, I'm at the time I was driving a red Pete, so I'm the red Pete across the road there. You know, just uh, send the cops my way if they want to talk to some witnesses. I'll, I'll tell them because I saw the whole thing. Um, but that kind of attitude is one that you, as a new driver, want to avoid, right? You might be, and it, again, the guy just it, it kind of made him look like a, 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 a stuck-up, sheltered mama's boy. Like he's, you know, well, mom and dad would just buy, just fix my car for me. Right? You know, somebody will just fix it for you. And it's not, you know, not comprehending the fact that some of us out here have to do that work ourselves or have to pursue, you know, it ourselves to get it repaired. Right? Um, I mean, two weeks, well, not two weeks ago, last week, my uh, my father, who drives truck as well, had his uh, his fender ripped off on uh, his W900. And the guy was, it was an older guy, a veteran. He'd been doing it for 30 years. He just... He parked in the spot. My dad pulled in when the guy was in his bunk. The guy got out and left and went to leave. And he just, there was nobody there when he when he got in the bunk and there was somebody there when he got out and he didn't look. So he cut left too early and just took my dad's fender off. But the guy, same thing. He doing truck, he'd been trucking for 30 years. He, you know, he, an older guy, he wasn't the kind of person that would usually make those kinds of mistakes. So he, same thing, he stuck around, he apologized, he admitted fault to the cops. He's a company guy, his company pays the insurance. So same thing, no problem giving the information to the cops. So, and my, like my dad said, he was, he was pissed at first and he gave the guy a blast. But then we realized that the guy, A, wasn't going to be indignant, B, wasn't going to run away, and C, felt genuinely bad. My dad said, okay, like, you know, okay. You know I, I appreciate that you stuck around, mistakes happen, right? So my dad is... The Kenworth W900, the hood is all molded. The hood and fenders are all molded as one piece, so you replace the whole hood. Um, so he's already got a new hood. It's already on. They just got to paint patch it and all that crap. Um, but again, it's it's a 
that that sort of, of reaction, because those will happen, especially if you're a newer driver, you will make mistakes, right? I'm not saying that to be a dick, I'm saying that because it's just the way it is, right? You're, you're, you're still getting used to how a, a, a big truck like this maneuvers, right? How to, how to back up a trailer. And you'll, you'll still fuck up. Like, I thankfully haven't run into anything, right? But like two days ago, I tore a mud flap off. Right, I, I I loaded, it took them seven hours to load me, so it was like 11 o'clock at night, and I started my day at five in the morning. And since I did sleep, my sleeper berth for half the freaking day, I had six hours left I could drive. Went to leave, decided, you know what, screw it, I'm tired. And I've been here so long, I only gotta stay for another three and a half hours before I have 10 hours again. So I said, okay, the heck with it, it's 11 o'clock now, I'll get up at four or five in the morning, no big deal. <laughs> so I backed up to where I could park, and I knew it was a snowbank there where they plowed all the snow. So I'd stayed wide, but I didn't stay wide enough. So I ran into the snowbank, tore my mud flap on it. Right? So I fixed it, and it's no big deal. But those kinds of little things will happen, right? For a year, two, three years. I mean, guys with boards, my dad did it. Like two months ago, we tore a mud flap off. Shit happens. Right? But when it happens, where, you know, if you bump another truck, the guy's gonna go, he's gonna be mad at you. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, even if he's a company guy, he's probably going to call you a whole bunch of names. And it's like, if you get wound up, you know, it, 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 I hate to say it, it makes you look like a prick because you're, you're the one that hit him, right? It's, it's, it's kind of cut and dry. So, and like I said, that kind of stuff will, hopefully it doesn't, but it, there is a fairly good chance it will happen. So, I guess to summarize that, you know, try to have a positive attitude when dealing with other people, and when when dealing with you know your equipment and how you how you conduct yourself as a, as a truck driver. If you if you get into truck driving, regardless of what type of trucking you get into, you know, I, I mean, again, there obviously it's it's trucking. It's not like you gotta wear a shirt and tie when it comes to being professional. But you know, try to be professional. If, if you make a mistake, own up to that. Is the single biggest piece of advice I can give to guys too, especially when dealing with truckers and if you have a mentor or a trainer, if he tells you something, the two words you never want to use together in the same sentence are I know. If a guy tells you something, don't tell him I know. Right? Even if he's telling you something you already do know, don't say I know. Because if you say I know, at some point he's going to say, all right, well you fucking know everything, then you figure it out for yourself. And I've watched that happen. Before I drove truck, I was a pilot car driver with oversized loads, particularly windmills. And they had just hired a new truck driver, fresh out of truck driving school. Young guy with, you know, thought he was Billy Big Rigger. And uh, I watched it happen. I, he screwed us something up. And the, the, the site supervisor, our site supervisor, was not, again, was, was not like, very, relatively nicely scolding him about it, right? Like, you know, you, you gotta not, you gotta watch when you're backing up like that. You gotta, you know, you gotta pay attention. Well, I know, I know that. And then the guy snapped and said, like, since you fucking know everything, why the fuck did it happen? Right, he was, he was done being polite and trying to be the responsible supervisor. He just fucking lost it. Of course, the guy had no response because if you already knew everything he's telling you, how'd you still make the mistake? Right, and that that guy had a, 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 a just a fucking reputation for making mistakes, and then telling everybody that he knew everything. Right, and people tried to give him help. I watched another driver, same thing, trying to give him a hand, and because you know, I know that and he stomped off. Since you already know everything, you figure it out. So 20 minutes later, when he came over and asked for help, he said, "Nope, you fucking know it all. It's your problem." And we all left him there. Right, truck drivers are. are a lot of truck drivers kind of like that concept, when they're, especially when they're older, of taking a, a young guy under their wing, right? And as a young guy, it's, it's kind of a, usually a, kind of a cringy situation, right? I, I don't want half of these, these guys that, that try to take me under their wing and show me the ropes to try to show me the ropes, right? I, I'm, you know, I, my dad showed me the ropes, right? And again, not everybody has that, and I get that, but I did. But that one time where you do need help, or they have a piece of information that you genuinely don't know. They're gonna think, well, you know, 
whatever, you know, you so-and-so or you have always listened to all my words of advice. You're a good kid, you know. Here's some more wisdom. And you'll you'll genuinely need that piece of advice he gives you that time. Where the guy that knows it all isn't gonna get that piece of advice. So that's kind of a, a good, good point to make too, right? Wherever you go to work, try to have a positive mental attitude and try to try to learn as much as you can and don't give guys the I know. Even like you said, they might be telling you something you've heard three times already. You know, just just let them let him say it because he's gonna feel like he's he's actually taught you something, right? So it, it, it influences people's opinions of you in, in, in ways where even if you haven't really shown to be like a, a good truck driver yet, if he thinks that you're genuinely listening to him, most guys will right away at that point, you're a good driver or you're, you're a good guy at least in his books, right? You're willing to listen and, and try your best and that's all that matters. So that's, you know, that's that's all kind of keeping in with a, like a more positive kind of mental attitude towards your co-workers, your trainers. Because again, most guys, you will end up with a mentor, right? It's guys that do the mega carry around will end up with a mentor. The mentor may be nice. The mentor may be a miserable piece of shit. The mentor might be lazy and not do anything, right? I, I've, I've witnessed all three. Um... You know, and, and it's it's unfortunate that it happens, but it happens. Another point to make, if your mentor is not, you and him don't get along, or, you know, you and her are just fighting all the time or whatever, you're allowed to put in a request for a new trainer, right? It, some people's personalities just clash, and it's not going to work. Again, you're in an 8 by 10 foot cubicle with another human being who you didn't know before you got stuffed in the eight by 10 foot cubicle with them. If your personalities clash, it's it's not gonna get better, right? Um, but again, I, I've tried to kind of suggest this whole time to get into trucking jobs that do not have you doing, or have you working with a mentor. Um, so I'm gonna wing into this rest area here. I haven't stopped for a couple hours and figured it out. Probably uh, do with a stretch, all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, and again, to, to summarize, I, I, I realize I've done a lot of rambling. I think my videos are likely going to be a lot of stupid rambling. Um, if you want to get into trucking, understand that while there are some life changes you're going to have to make, they are not as drastic or as significant as I think a lot of guys try to make them out to be. And that there is genuine money to be made, but you need to be the one that does some research yourself and look into different companies and talk to other drivers who have worked there. You know, if, if you know guys who drive truck, put a bug in their ear, ask them what they think of a company. Hell, even go on to Facebook, like, I see it all the time. There's some groups I'm involved in and guys will post up, hey, like, you know, I just got my license. You know, I, I live in so-and-so area. Like, what are some good companies out of my area? And Generally speaking, some guys will, of course, be pricks, and that's just the internet. But generally speaking, a lot of guys will, will give you their piece of advice. So you can start to weigh their opinions compared to what the carrier themselves is telling you. Because all the carriers, again, will paint themselves in a pretty positive light. And uh, again, form your own opinion and decide, okay, that, that company works for me or that company does not. And, you know, get into the line of work. In terms of what you do, I mean, what you're seeing out of my hood is what I get paid to see every day, right? I get paid to travel. I get paid to go to new places. I've seen all kinds of stuff. I think I just missed the only parking spot left in here. Because apparently right at the end, there's nothing. There might be one right here next to this camper. Uh, there is. These are going to be cozy. But let's see if I can make this work. This is uh, apparently a pretty, uh, pretty tight little rest area. Yeah, I got room. Ones for, there's lots of room in front, but oh, there's boatloads of parking on the other side of the curb. Oh, go figure. So, conclusion you want to get into trucking? Get into trucking. It's fun. I like it. You're going to see the world. You're going to do all kinds of fun things. Well, I'll see America, anyways. You're going to do all kinds of fun things. And you're, you know, even if you decide at the end of it you don't want to keep doing it, the license is 
always going to be valuable. You'll never want a, for a job again if you have your CDL, right? There are tons of jobs that you can do with a commercial license. So that's going to be my conclusion. That's part two. I'm going to end up doing more of this stuff because it's kind of fun. So if you like watching this video, you know, I guess watch more of them. Do whatever makes you happy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not your fucking boss. I can't tell you what to do. But hey, it's better than watching videos of fucking 14-year-old kids playing Fortnite for hours on end, right? 